Well, who else is there for me to blame? The toys? <laughs> They're collectibles! How's it going, guys? So today I wanted to talk about another filmmaking basic, dialogue scene. I feel like having the dialogue scene down to a science is really important as a filmmaker, so that's exactly what I'm going to do today with today's exercise. Okay, so let's talk about what you need for a dialogue scene then. Typically speaking, a dialogue scene only requires two actors, a shot of one of them and the reverse of that. And if you want to get fancy with it, maybe get a two shot, get a wide. That's obviously simplifying it, but you would probably need a little bit more depending on the scene. For example, the dreaded family dinner scene. You're gonna need multiple actors, multiple shots, wide shots, shots with two actors in it, two shots, three shots, and you're gonna have to do them all multiple, multiple times in all different areas, go all the way around the table. Oh my gosh. Breathe thick, breathe thick. But today, I don't wanna think about that family dinner scene. I just wanna think about two actors talking to each other, telling a story. The classic line filmmakers love to say, is show don't tell. But I say when you're gonna tell, tell it well. Ooh. That was good. Can I get that like in plain black text with like a white background and then like with my name under it? Thank you. So for this one, I just wanted to see what came natural to me and kind of take a backseat about all the film language stuff and just focus on seeing what comes natural in the moment and trying to figure it out as we go. Jordan and Shaylee both reached out to me wanting stuff for their acting reel, so I wanted to use this opportunity to really do what directors do best, and that's set your cast and crew up for success, and then take all the credit for it. <laughs> Stupid black hole gonna hurt I wanted to go to Hawaii with you that stopped us. Me? Yes, you. Oh. There truly is something special about filming something with no time constraints at all. Just relaxing, shooting, there's no worry in the world. I know that's very unrealistic and will never probably happen in a real life setting, but man, felt good. <laughs> so as I said before, I wanted to focus on acting in this exercise and just focus on performance rather than filmmaking. And that's pretty much exactly what we did. Shaylee and Jordan ran through the scene a couple times and I just kind of saw from a view, just kind of seeing what came natural in the moment, just trying to observe and then trying to piece together what it will look like in, in the final product. I took note of key moments in the blocking, like when Shaylee takes off her glasses, when Jordan moves to the center of the room, and when Shaylee joins him. From there, I would put together what coverage we would need for each segment and ended up splitting the scene into four main setups and then one opportunity for an insert. Putting together a scene, even a simple one like this, takes a lot of mental Olympics, but luckily I had a lot of experience from previous films to draw from, and using that I could start building the scene in my head, uh, shot by shot, seeing how the edit will look like. Visualizing the scene is really, really important, and uh, it's definitely a skill that takes a lot of practice. I also made sure to take note of important story moments in the script. We've all seen that couple who's been together way too long. It can be sort of fun because they know each other's weak points and that's kind of the fun part about this story. So whenever we found opportunities to make a joke and emphasize comedy, we made sure to take it and then we used it again later on. I also made it a focus of mine to emphasize blocking as well. I had Jordan's character move to the center of the room when he's having his big uh, explosive moment in the script and I had that done because I felt like he had more control of the scene at that moment and that's something that I really wanted to emphasize. But then when I have Shaylee's character move to the center of the room, she kind of gets off the bed and she walks up to him. You can kind of see the conversation start to flip her way now and that she's the one in control. And I think subconsciously people understand that even if they aren't actively thinking about it, they understand that she is now in control of this conversation. Jordan really sells that power shift as well with this like moment of fear that he has when she stands up. And I think that those little moments like that are great because while you might not actively be thinking about it when you watch it, there's you, you feel it. You still feel that that fear a little bit and you feel like that emotion. That's, that's really important in the dialogue scene for sure. A good director's best asset is good actors. So all that worked out great, but let's talk about some of the mistakes we made. 
Aside from not having the best audio source and not really putting a whole lot of attention on lighting, I would say the biggest mistake that this scene is written, the thing that's missing the most is probably a decent wide shot. A lot of times when you don't have a wide shot in a scene, it starts to feel kind of claustrophobic with all the close-ups, and that's something that I kind of was feeling after editing this scene. I think wide shots are really important because it lets you understand where the characters are moving around in the space and it just like I think it would have solved that claustrophobic feeling I'm having when I watch the scene if we just had a proper wide shot and just really seeing where the characters are moving around in. That being said, it doesn't completely break the scene. I guess it does kind of play into the idea of how these two characters are feeling very stuck in this apartment. And like, I think that maybe the claustrophobia kind of helps that a little bit, but you know, it would have nice to have options in the edit to, to cut to that wide, to cut to the closest, to cut to the mediums. I think just having those as an option would have been really nice. I would say probably the biggest mistake though out of everything was something that I did personally, which was I was also holding the camera the whole time. And in doing that, you kind of focus on framing a little bit more and you're not really thinking about the performance. So I would have loved to have help the actors give me more varied performances and kind of talk about them, about how we can change it up from take to take. I've definitely made it a point of emphasis on future films that we work on to really step away from holding the camera and be more focused on what's being captured and the performances of the actors. Just being more of a team player for the cast on these films is going to be really important for me as a director. If there's one thing that I can take away from this exercise, it's definitely variety in performance and variety in shots. Variety. Good lesson. Pretty easy to remember. <laughs> so that's all I got for this one, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any feedback about stuff that we could do better, things that you've learned in your previous shoots. I'd love to have a conversation down below about all this stuff. I think that's gonna make us all better movie makers, so let's uh let's 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 chat. If you like this exercise, you're in luck because I'm gonna be doing more of these types of breakdowns in the future because it's really really fun for me and kind of therapeutic as well. It's kind of like a journal, but it's a video and it's public for everyone to see. It's kind of scary. So yeah, subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see those videos in the future, and uh, I'll see you next time.